All right, it's that time again, time for another solo over Nighter in the Woods. And I'm thinking we keep with our theme of simplicity, find something that's almost ready-made, and get her done. Let's get to it. So you can see that log goes probably another 15 feet into the bushes, which would be kind of a pain in the butt to get back in there and try to lift it up. Or I can simply come over here and cut it off, lift it, throw logs underneath it, get the height that I want, then simply clean out the brush. Something like this right here is almost ready made. You have a front post right there, the log actually folded itself over, it fell to the ground, you have a ridge pole right here that all you need to do here is lift this bad boy up a little bit, wedge some rocks or logs underneath it to give it the height that you want. Simply throw a tarp over top of it or land logs next to it on both sides and create an improvised debris hut. Something to block the wind, block the rain. If branches were to fall down, it's gonna hit this exoskeleton, so to speak, and bounce off versus smashing a tarp onto your body. So these are like gold out in the woods. And in my opinion, if you're just throwing a tarp over it, you're 80% done. But knowing me and my channel, we'll go that extra step, put in the effort, put in the work, and make it worth it. So let's get to it. So far, so good, we're looking outstanding. Once again, simplicity at its best. What do we do? We threw a poncho over a down tree. 
that's our ridge pole, use an improvised trucker's hitch and an overhand loop at that end, and we're in business. And once again, it's items from our kit. We didn't bring out anything that's unnecessary to add weight and burn calories. So now I'm thinking we get off this mud because it rained last night and it may rain again. So let's get some type of elevated log platform here, get our ground pad on that bad boy, and then dig our fire pit. All right, so before we get too far down the trail and start cooking our chow, let's talk about midweek videos. They're back. I've stressed it and stressed it and stressed it. We're at number 14 now, I believe. So for 14 weeks, we've been dropping Wednesday to Thursday-ish. We've been dropping midweek videos. This last one, once again, most missed it. It was titled Midweek Video or Corporal's Corner Midweek Video number 14. The $13 do-it-yourself bush pot oven for the common man. And we took this pot for eight dollars and change this cooling rack that we cut down for three dollars and change and created an oven that we can cook chow inside out in the woods why am i telling you this one because most miss the video and two this oven's going to play into tonight's or today's or tonight's today's tonight's overnighter so on that note i'll show you for those that missed it how we made this bad boy, and then we'll get to it. Normally people process fat wood just like you've seen. They get their shavings on the back of a saw, the back of a knife, in this case, in the back of our small little saw or a pocket knife. And it, for the most part, it works great. Hit that with a lighter or a ferrocium rod. Spark's gonna hit it, it's gonna burst into flame. You get about 20 to 30 seconds burn time with this. If the wood is completely dry and you've collected the proper material, meaning pencil lead, pencil, finger and thumb size sticks, it should ignite no problem and you have a rip-roaring fire in probably under a minute, okay? But in conditions like this where everything is damp, it's wet, rain's coming and going, you might want to add a little kick to this. So why not process this piece of fat wood, the remaining piece, the same way you would when you collect your kindling and your fuel? Again, pencil lead, pencil, finger, and thumb size. For this, why not get larger shavings, feather sticks, toothpick size, and then finally small slivers by batoning this add that to it, create a small campfire, then add your kindling to that, then ultimately your fuel. Give you a longer burn time and help dry out that damp wood. She's coming down. Ah, no rain in the forecast, and yet here we are. So the timing worked out well. I'm in the shelter, and I'm dry. Um, luckily, I collected some firewood. So we'll hang out here for about an hour.
God's pissed. Um, hang out here for about an hour and then see if it blows over. Hopefully get a fire. Um, and we'll go from there. Go ahead and light the shavings here. And like I said, that would burn up in about 15, maybe 20 seconds, maybe 30 if you're lucky. From here we're going to add our feather sticks. And we're going to go ahead and add some small toothpick slivers to this. And creating that mini campfire. This way it's going to extend my burn time and guarantee to dry out that wet wood. It's important to open these sticks up. That way you get the airflow in there. And on top of that, it's going to dry everything out. The fire likes the chaos, so all those channels are opened. I'm laying them this way, the next one I'm going to lay this way. and so on and so forth. So once again, there's your poor man's or common man's bush pot oven for 13 bucks. Okay, so all we're gonna do there is the kielbasa's already cooked. We're gonna cook the eggs and we have some mushrooms in there. Our bell pepper is our shell. Once it looks like a scrambled egg or an omelet on the inside, you're good to go. So we have two eggs scrambled with kielbasa and mushrooms baked inside of a bell pepper inside of our do-it-yourself $13 common man's bush pot oven. Here we go. Oh, and covered in cheese. Look at that. Ooh. Perfection. And it's cooked all the way through. Check this out. So I'll give you a little 360 twirl there, a uh, little twirly motion. This one gentleman decided that he was gonna troll me and claim that I didn't show you what it looked like afterwards because it was so thin and made from China that it melted and it dented. Well, as you see, it looks exactly like any other stainless steel from any other company that you buy for cheap online. So again, 13 bucks and we're in business. Now, 
supposed to dump here shortly and throughout the entire night off and on, which means no fire for me. I'm gonna get comfortable and set up and I'll catch you later. So back to our um, $13 um, do-it-yourself bush pot for the common man. That's something I threw together real quick. It's a larger version of what's available in the market. That's an eight quart. I think the one on the market is like a four quart. Pick your poison. Um, like I stated in midweek video um, that you're not gonna backpack something like that. Um, you're not. But most people car camp. They go out in tents or RVs or in a group setting with a family. So something that size or larger, you can feed family of four, family of six. So something to think about, you know, 13 bucks versus something on the market like 43 to 50 bucks after taxes. So, you know, pick your poison. Um, but something cool you can just throw together and do it yourself. Um, and it worked out well. So on that note, um, I'm gonna lay down here and relax because it's dark. I scrounged up some firewood, but I guarantee it's gonna rain. So on that note, catch you all in the morning. Zero dark, too damn early. Uh, no rain, but just humid AF, man. Oh, no airflow either. That sucks. And here we go, eggs in a 120 year old skillet. Mm. Eaten with a forged fork by yours truly. So what's that mean? That means the Etsy store is open. Once again, my Etsy store is open. As always, we got cold handle skillets, military surplus gear. We have our flint and steel, Corporal's Corner, Frontier Strikers that are in there, some with flint, some without. And now, dropping today, we have our Corporal's Corner Frontier Forged Forks, okay? Um, be limited quantity, just like all the rest of them, maybe 25 to 50 a week. So get yours now. So once again, the Etsy store is open. Go to my video description box, click on that bad boy, and get her done. On that note, don't forget to check out my midweek videos dropping on Wednesdays or Thursdays, somewhere in there. So look for me. You will not get notified. Just look for my videos. Follow me there. Get on my email list at corporalaf.com. Now, all the gear in my videos can be found in two places. One, my Amazon influencer page, and two, my Etsy page. Both links are found inside my description box. Now, please do me that favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. And as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun. I'm going to catch you next time. Now it's time for Corporal's final thoughts. Let's talk about coincidence. Is there such thing as coincidence in this world? Okay. I don't mean you're walking along to see a black cat, you glance over again, you see the same black cat, and there's a glitch in the matrix, okay? Although that's a different topic for a different time. Kind of like if a tree falls in the forest and nobody's there, did it make a sound? You know, we could be there all day. But coincidence, okay? Ian Fleming, the famous James Bond writer, wrote something to the effect of, if it happens once, it's happenstance. If it happens twice, it's coincidence happens three times or more, it's enemy action, okay? Now that can be interpreted all different ways. My question though is, is there such thing as coincidence, okay? Your workplace environment, you come up with some type of um, procedure and then you find out somebody copied it or somebody wrote something similar and they went with their idea, not yours. Was it stolen? Was it coincidence? It happens a second time. You, somebody's figuring something out here. Somebody's watching you, you know. Um, Social media, you're watching YouTube. I guarantee you type 
how to tie a bow in. There's going to be 5,000 to 5 million videos showing how to do that. Okay. Um, some similar, some not. Coincidence? I don't know. Um, but a true happenstance turns into coincidence and an enemy action when there is intent. And that's my opinion. The enemy action and coincidence fall after the happenstance. And intent is there. Okay. Social media. Let's say you make a video. Let's say you put out an Instagram post or a Twitter post and somebody responds to it, not in a comment or a retort. They respond to it by making the exact same post, but doing it a different way and saying, this is the only way, or this is how it should be done. This is the only way it should be done. This is the proper way it should be done. That to me crosses the line from coincidence into enemy action. And here's why. The intent. The intent is to, and I'm sorry, but this is a reality check, to shift that spotlight, redirect that focus, move all the attention onto them and what they're doing. And at the same time, discredit you by saying this is the only way. This is how it should be done. This is the way to do it. This is the way. Um, when that happens once, happenstance. Happens twice, coincidence. Happens a third time, it could be considered enemy action, okay? And the sad part is most people in small communities or small workplace environments see this. And you got to be blind not to. So the person that understands that has two choices. A, cause a problem. B, take the high ground walk away and let everybody watch. Okay? So the choice is yours. Okay? This is just a question that was posed to me. And I got thinking about it because I've seen people screw people over for a dollar in the workplace. I've seen people rat on employees, you know, thinking they're going to get ahead. And it happens once, twice, three times. Third time's a charm, you know. So this week coming up, when you hit the rat race and you're in your cubicle, you're out there in the workforce, look around, identify those people and let them hang themselves. Give them the rope, let them hang themselves. Why? Because everybody sees it. No need to point it out because everyone sees it. On that note, until next time, take care of yourself and each other.